money. Yeah. $179. Yeah. <laughs> It'll save your life. Um, guys, so excited about the final uh, panel guests for today. Uh, they're all stars. Um, and uh, they're the power duo. And they go by the names Brianna Buckmaster and Kim Rowe! What you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you? Bad girl, bad girl, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you? Bad girl, bad girl, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you? Bad girl, bad girl, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you? You know what, you're not... Well, I think I think You're not gonna do a goddamn thing because we can't touch you. I know, it's... You're gonna be like, neener, neener, bad girls, fuck off! You're gonna get a talking. You're gonna get a stern talking to. Yes, tip. you are gonna get a piece of my mind. That sounds worse, man. I'd rather just molest you and get the fucking virus. Yeah. Worth it. Hashtag SBN Vegas. Thank you. We love you. Enjoy. Enjoy, gentlemen. Put five. The band, everyone. Oh, hello, hello, hello. hello. Front. And front. And front. Aww. Good job. Thanks. There we go. Kim and I have a new thing that we discovered at the PJ party yesterday. Ready? Yeah. Hey, man. What's up? I'm sorry. I didn't get the second half. It's all right. It's foot five. It's okay. It's foot five. Foot five. We oh, touched. I just licked my microphone by accident. What? I know. I thought about that. I was like, we're... We're putting things near our face that have just been near other people's. Just don't lick the microphone today. That's what she said. <laughs> she did, and she'll probably say it again. Listen, is there any youngsters in the audience? Oh. Well, wait, I see someone waving. Welcome to your formal education. <laughs> okay? I would apologize, but I don't apologize for unnecessary things. Should you, youngster? But you don't have to swear if you don't want to. And I want to, so I'm going to. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Um, I'm wearing a short skirt, and you will see my Britney if I do that again, so I won't. <laughs> oh! Did you guys want to ask questions? I'm just gonna pace. Okay, all right. Hi. Uh, so my question is actually for Kim. Okay, see you later. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Brianna's gonna Hello, answer Kim. it. Yes. Did you have Did you have any stories you could tell us about the vampire scene with the boys as vampires? Oh no, Brianna needs to answer this question. She'd come up with much more exciting answers than I would. Oh no. Okay. Do you guys know the bit where when one of us gets asked a question, the other person answers for them? Yeah. Okay. So I just need to clarify. Okay. To clarify, here I'll give you I'll give you the backstory. Everybody, ignore this for a second. Are you okay? I thought I had a hair there. Belly button lint. It's, like it's deadly. Hair. I missed one. Um, that's, that's copious. <laughs> just the one. Just poking out going, hey man. Hello. Hey, it's lonely down here. Hi. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so in a spoiler. Oh, no, in an, in an alternate future, vampire Jensen ripped my throat out. So, any stories you can tell us about shooting that scene, Kim? Well, listen. If there's one thing I know about Jensen, is he loves a good, veiny neck. Like, it's just one of his kinks, you know? And, I mean, don't tell him I told you this, because he's kind of, he's a private dude. So, um... And as you know, as Kim Rhodes, I, I have a very strong neck, like particularly on each side. So the veins do pop out. So when I heard that I was going to be doing this scene where uh, gents, uh, Sam, oh, Dean, and Sam? No, just Dean, just Dean. Just Dean turns into a vampire. Oh no, they both turn into vampires. They're both, both turn into a vampire. I was... You know, I thought I was perfect for this because of the size of my veins. I thought, oh my gosh, they don't actually have to put any prosthetic veins on. They don't have to do anything because my neck is ripe and ready for a vampire scene. So, this is where it gets funny. Um, 
<laughs> um, so we were in the makeup trailer, and Jensen, the thing between me and Jensen, like it's palpable. <laughs> palpable. And you guys know how I've told the story lots of times about how Jensen makes my upper lip sweat. Well, now it was his turn. <laughs> So I'm sitting in makeup, and Jensen walks over, and is like, hey, Rhodes, what's happening, what's up? And he looks at my neck, and he goes, wow. Those are some pretty uh, great uh, makeup veins that they've got on you. And I go, it's not makeup. <laughs> and, um, he, you, see, you see beads of sweat starting to form on his forehead and then he leaves, he just leaves and I hear him silently weeping outside of the trailer <laughs> true story, true story and I go outside, I go, hey man, are you okay? and he's like, yeah, I'm just having a lot of feelings right now and, and me, being the woman I am, I go, do you want to take that to the trailer? <laughs> Oh, shh. Don't tell anybody I told you that, though. Shh. It's a secret. Nothing happened. Don't be weird. We're both married. But, um, but he did taste my neck. Thanks, Kim. Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. I really, I really love alternate world me. Alternate world me is a lot more fun than this world me. I don't know, man. I think they're just both, they're different flavors they're of fun. Just, uh, that's true. Different that's flavors true. of fun. We, I, no, the, I, I do have one quick story. When you saw me die, what I was hearing was, Hey, Dean, get the hot sauce! <laughs> Thanks, Jensen. I will totally keep my shit together while you're yelling about Sriracha as I die. <laughs> Cute. That's a cute scene, though. I love it. Thank you. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. My name is Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. Um, so my question is, give me a second. Okay. Um, my question is, you guys have known each other for several years now, so I was wondering if you guys could give us your first or your best impersonation of each other. I just did one. I was going to say this. I, mean, I, I just did one. Your turn. I, of, of me or my character. My character's pretty easy. Both. Both. There we go. Oh! <laughs> Is that me or Donna? <laughs> no, well... I can actually do both. Wait, I'm gonna do... I'm gonna do Brianna doing Donna. Somebody yell, cut! Cut! So, uh, we're gonna get some soup or what? <laughs> That's my favorite line. I wish they would write in for Donna. That's what I always do when they're like, can you, yeah, fuck around. Okay, so you wanna get some soup or? I like soup. I like chewy soup. I like, you know, watery soup. It's all good, it's good for you, you know? Um, that was very good. I'm not gonna do Kim again, I already did it. But we have known each other for a long time. And more so, being good at impressions, we're very good at knowing each other. We were actually recording uh, episodes of the podcast this morning. And we, yeah, uh, um, and we kept, I kept saying things and Kim would be like, I was just going to say that. Like it happened three or four times. So, you know, we're, we're synced up. We are. That should be the animatic that moment. Yeah. We're like, if we get synced on everything, that'll be really weird. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. I don't have a uterus anymore. No. So. <laughs> just Kim suddenly gets her period going, wow, we're really. Oh, fuck. Oh, the we're healing powers of friendship. I love it. You guys want to see me moonwalk? Yes. yes. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's that's. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Brianna has not been in front of an audience for a long time. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Not sorry. Hi, cute hat. Hello, my beauties. How are you? Wonderful. And how are you, lovely? I'm doing good. 
My question is for both of you. It's about the Wayward Podcast, which I love listening to. You guys drop such truth bombs that make me think and kind of engage uh, with what you're talking about. And I know that those podcasts, you tend to be very vulnerable and open. And I guess my question is, how do you kind of come down after having those podcasts, after particularly intense like podcast sessions with what you're talking Snacks about? Snacks and crying. <laughs> you know what, like, um, snacks for me, for sure. So snacks, crying. I cry sometimes, I do, but my crying is always like, oh no, what's happening, what's happening, oh it's coming, it's coming, where Kim's like, she can continue a conversation where I just, I have to like stop and pull it together. Um, both are wonderful ways to emote. But um, Kim and I, from the get-go, always had a very natural um, way of communicating and conversing. And it's never, I don't think ever, been a challenge to carry on a conversation. Literally, sometimes our challenges go, um, let's talk about tape. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's talk about something that we don't know what we're gonna talk about. We can always find a way to get to an interesting story about it. And that's what's great is like, and I talked to um, Kim about this, you know, a little while ago where I was like, I feel like I have grown so much through that podcast because it's kind of in a way like therapy because you're just talking shit through and stuff comes up that you don't know is there and that's kind of the beautiful thing about talk therapy or if you also have friends that you do that Kim's so great at holding space and um that's been such a great part for me about the podcast but I never feel occasionally we do things that are heavy or occasionally like this morning we didn't have any heavy topics because both of us knew that we had a weekend of work ahead of us and that can sometimes be a little bit exhausting but it never feels like I need to cleanse myself I feel like I am being cleansed from the podcast yeah I like that. I totally agree. It's it's there's never any hangover with it. It's 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 like it's talking to one of my best friends. We just happen to be recording it. So there isn't any recovery involved. It's just kind of like we hug each other and then she goes back to her apartment. I mean, it's fine. You just leave it all there and then what you've talked about and then just kind of keep going on. Yeah. It's very natural for us, but we're very, like, I mean, I'll talk, speak for myself. I'm a big oversharer and always have been. And there's things that I don't like to, I, you know, Kim and I, we're very different in the way that we emote. I, I really do keep, um, like, um, a, like, really big, big emotions kind of locked down. I prefer to be by myself when I have those. But I do talk about my emotions a lot. I talk about how I'm feeling a lot, and I, I love that. And so it doesn't feel hard, or it doesn't feel like it's something that needs to be fixed after. It's just life, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. I was wondering what the craziest thing you guys have done together is. Like the craziest story you have with one another. There's that one time we both had cookies at the same time. <laughs> okay, I have two stories. Neither of them are that crazy, but uh, it's just like a testament to like, oh, fuck, okay, shit, okay, great. Is that last year, uh, well, I guess it would be about a year and a half ago now, I got an apartment in LA on a very impulsive whim. Everything kind of lined up magically, and because I'm like this, I went, it's supposed to be, so I got this apartment in LA. And I have been going back and forth for the last, you know, year and a bit. And um, but when I got the apartment in LA, I didn't realize, how, I didn't know how I had to pay for it. <laughs> like I had money in my bank account, but I live in Canada. And so you can't do direct deposit. You can't give them a Canadian check. And so Kim was with me and she was like, oh, okay, okay, no, I got this, I'll deal with this. So she ended up going, I think, getting like a money order from your bank, and then she signed the lease for me, and she had the key, she had her daughter with her, and she was just like, oh, this is easy, I bail people out of jail all the time. <laughs> she's just like, she's that person. So when you're like, what's the craziest thing you've done? I was like, I don't know, it's kind of crazy when we don't finish a wheel of brie. Yes, you know? Yeah, that was, yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know, crazy is a 
all in perspective. The other thing that I wanted to tell us the story of when we were in England, and <laughs> we were gonna go for a walk, and I was standing outside, and... <laughs> Okay, well, I'll be you. I'll be you. Okay, I'll be you. Okay, you be me. All right, inside, outside. Inside, outside. So um, here's the door, which is made of glass. me right my comedy boner. I love it. So that's it. That's all we got for you. We, we're just naturally Sorry. crazy. So. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, you guys are such big inspirations to me and I wanted to say I love you and thank you. Um, my question is, if Wayward Sisters were to be picked up, what type of storylines do you think it would have taken on? Well, Jody and Donna would not be in the kitchen making soup, which is what I think the CW wanted for us to do. Yeah. No, I don't know. Do I don't do that. know that, but that's what it felt like at some point. But um, there were some pretty, they had written an outline for season one and potentially season two. <gasps> oh, oh, it's not happening. We can tell them. Oh, tell them. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> the vampire. You thing? Are, we're gonna oh, yeah. be a vampire. Donna was gonna get turned into a vampire. Donna was gonna get turned into a vampire. Wouldn't that be crazy? And then right? I go straight to Kim's neck. <laughs> it's very veiny, I hear from me. <laughs> oh, it's not veiny at all. You have a beautiful neck. It's wrinkly. It's not oh, wrinkly. No. It, oh, it is. Yeah. Well, when you Here, do that, I'm you photo op. Thought? Like every fucking every time I make the mistake of looking at photo ops, I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah, that's my laugh. I used to begrudge it, and I was like, oh, look at all my chins, and I'm like, fuck it, look how happy I am. So I'm like, mm, enjoy yes. your laugh face. Yeah. So I think I, uh, I that was that was going to be a fun that was thing. A good one. To see how do you retain your Donna-ness as you are a vampire. And that's always the fun thing about a character like Donna, because she is a heightened character, and she was built as a comedic character. She hasn't done comedic episodes as of the you know, past few seasons, but um, it's great to have... And you got to do that a little bit when you turned into a demon, right? Yeah. Yeah, like that is so fun for that's actors fun. to just play... Um, just teeny elements of their character, like their character within someone. Like, it's such a great challenge when you're playing, you know, one character for such a long period of time. Um, so that would have been really fun, yeah. Yeah, that would have been good. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name's Saraya, and I just want to say that I really, really love you guys. And um, my question was, so like in some of the other panels that I've watched, like um, Brianna said that Jensen, when you guys eat food or something and then you spit in the bucket, he lets you spit first and then he does it. <laughs> or like um, Kim, when you told the stories of when you first met them and you like got really nervous, I was wondering what are some other things that they do on set that still makes you nervous or makes you feel butterflies inside? Breathing. Okay. <laughs> Being tall, walking, sitting, saying stuff, bending over. That's it for me. Just the, otherwise, I'm like, whatever. I don't give a shit. Look at those dorks. They are such so stupid. Jensen dropped something. Oh. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> but all of the 
those guys, all of them, that make you feel all the Twitter-pated, carbonated things, are not where they are in life because they were anointed and set there. We don't respond to them because of their position. They have their position because that is, because they all rolled 10 in the D&D world charisma. <laughs> Wow, that's... They are, they have earned our reaction to them. They are good, wonderful, strong, beautiful, funny, amazing human beings. And that affects other human beings. And that's the truth about, I mean, that is, that's the truth about them, but also the human kind is like, there are a lot of attractive actors in the world but they are so fucking charming, and they're just so good at what they do, and my favorite is literally is watching how they treat the crew, and how they treat day players. Like, how they treat people that they don't know, who are guests on their show. And I, I, I live in Vancouver, and so lots of my friends end up being on their show. Um, some, uh, somebody that works on my cartoon just played a, a role on the show in episode 17. And he said the same thing. He was like, oh man, he worked with Jensen. He's like, he's such a good guy. We just talked about, he has twins, Jensen has twins. And I was just like, it doesn't matter. Nobody goes on set and goes, oh, those fuckers. <laughs> just me. <laughs> um, they're such good guys. They're cute, but the good in them is yeah. better. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ivana. Um, you guys are very inspirational, and especially on social media, you post a lot of body, body positivity. And I've been on a journey for uh, over a year and a half. And <laughs> one thing I want to ask you is, um, if you have one thing you want to leave behind to tell all the people out there with like looking at their body or anything about that, what would you like to say? The journey to love your body is not, is not a simple one. It is not um, a through line straight from beginning to end. It is a journey. So it, there are mountains, there are hills, there are oceans, there are storms. And the key I think to know is your body is yours forever. And it is our goal to make peace with it however way we can. You know, and so I feel like if, if you are inspired by things that I say that brings me so much joy, um, I'm inspired by lots of people, uh, especially on social media. They're strangers and they have no idea they're inspiring me because people right now I feel like are, are growing strong and are growing the confidence to really show up and really let themselves be seen, me included. You know, I don't. I don't hide my belly rolls as much as I used to. I wear short skirts and, you know, I don't want you to see my vagina, but <laughs> the rest of it I don't really care, you know? Um, where, you know, a couple years ago, society would have frowned upon that shit. So what's glorious now is that there are opportunities for all of us to see versions of ourselves out in the wild, being seen, being loved, being cherished, being naked if people want to be. Um, so I think that if, if there's any way, even if it is finding inspiration on social media, to make peace with your body, do it. Because it's not going anywhere. It's not. And man, oh man, does life get so much better when you start being friends with yourself. Okay? I have something to add. Go fucking figure. <laughs> I think I am so willing to allow my definition of worth be what's defined through eyes of fear. If someone's frightened, they will look at me and they will see something to be afraid of and they will not like me. So you asked what I would like to leave. What I would like to leave is my willingness to see you with love and know that you are worth 
that love. And I will hold you until you can believe that about yourself. Thank you. Hello! Hello. Uh, you guys are just superheroes in a, in a way to me. Not just your characters, but how you guys present yourselves up here. You're just super women and... I'm about to take off my clothes. Does that help? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh, look at that fucking white t-shirt. Oh. It's on a stick. Thank you. My okay, question. Continue. My question is, uh, when if you there are so many roles now opening up for women uh, as superheroes. Finally, we're getting movies like Wonder Woman and Birds of Prey and Black Widow. If you guys could play a role, like a superhero role, which one would you want to play? <laughs> Fuck you guys are asking hard questions today. Uh, it's like you can't touch anybody or something. <laughs> I don't know, Kim, you're better. I don't know superheroes. You know them because Tabby oh, loves them. I'm so salty. I'm, I have edited so far eight responses to her question because they're all just too fucking salty oh, about okay. being a 50-year-old lady in Hollywood. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I would play Furiosa's goddamn mother is what I would play. And I would rock that shit. Oh, yeah. Oregon and have blueberry bushes. That's also an option these days. Feeling fucking great about my life in Hollywood. I don't know. Like, again, I don't know the superhero world that well, even though I see all the movies, but I usually have a glass of wine while I see the movies, and I go, who's that? Who's that? Oh, who's that? I know. Okay. Who's that? So are you a Marvel girl? So she'll answer for I'm me. I'm going to assign her. Um, she would be Spider-Woman. The, um, the pregnant spider woman, who's, the, who's spider Gwen's, like, mentor. You agree? Mm -hmm. I think she's, like, smart ass and, like, the fuck is everybody's problem? Fix this shit. Oh, I, I love we, it. Yeah, I know. She's in. Is that, is that Jess? What's her name? Jess? Someone help me. <laughs> I refuse Jess to believe I know more about Marvel heroines than anyone else in this room. No. Help me out. I don't you know a lot. Spider Woman, it's my daughter's fault. I know. That's all we read are Marvel. I love it. Jessica, Jessica Drew. Who said Thank that? Thank you. Who said Thank that? You. There we go. Thank you, yes. Can Did I... you Google it? Did you know that? No. And do you agree with my assessment? Be ashamed of yourself. Why are you cowering? I'm just I'm proud yeah. of you. That's I think all. you would be, uh, yeah, I think you'd be a good, You're like I, a little her. Yeah. Spider Woman. Spider, spider woman, woman from one of the other... Un There's many, many spiders. Spider Women? Yes, there are many spiders. Oh, jeez. Many, Lord. many universes. Many, many Lord. spiders. Well, that's good. You could fuck it up in one universe and then just have, hop over to another one. Yeah. <laughs> right? Totally. Oh, okay, yeah. sweet. Yes. I think, I think Jessica Jones, like, it, something like Jessica Jones would be amazing for the two of you guys to be <laughs> in. I want... Okay, so what I wish... Uh, who is it that has... It's Hellcat. Who has... Her, um, her, 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 her uh, placement. So what she does is she takes people with superpowers who don't want to be superheroes and finds them jobs in the world. It's oh. her, her uh, temp agency, Patsy, Patsy, help me out. Patsy Parker's on, temp you got this, agency. You got this. None of you fucking care. We'd be superheroes. <laughs> there, you have your answers. Don't make us work harder. Okay? This is Vegas. Thank you. We're gonna go hang out with some male strippers later. <laughs> no, we're not. I'm not paying for that shit. Hi! It's for frightening. Any. I'm just gonna say for a second, I may be one of the few, but I don't like that waved in my face. I do. Yeah. Stop, it. Stop it. It reminds me of those videos where they're interrupted with a slap, and I don't... Oh, I love it. It's like a cat toy. I 
That's your question, sweetheart. Wow. Hello. Um, I was about to say you should move to Oregon, but actually you would be walking into a lot of spider webs in Oregon I'm okay in, with in that. a couple of months. It's the same okay. I'm from Oregon. Okay. I know uh, what I'd be getting into. Okay. Um, this is kind of a weird question, maybe. Bring it. Uh, have you guys, what's the most embarrassing or hilarious dream you've ever had about people on the show or being on the show? Oh, oh, okay, I've got one for you. I've got one for you. I actually have one of those dreams. I had one really of remembering dreams. We did not, okay, we did, it was a situation where this person and I we're about to have sex. We had all of our clothes on, but it was like, oh, this is gonna, oh, this is You're happening. Are to say who it was? Oh, I will, hang okay. on. Okay. It's <laughs> the problem, I want it to be super sexy and then I'll tell you who Okay, okay, okay. And so we were about to have sex and then this person was called to set and I was like, oh, that's a shame. I really wanted to fuck that person. And it was so intense that I woke up and went, I don't feel comfortable around this person anymore. <laughs> I have to text this person and tell them why I'm gonna be really, really weird around them. <laughs> because I had a dream that we were about to have sex and Adam Fergus has never fucking let me forget it. Oh I mean, I don't know how to tell you all the ways you went wrong. I went so, <laughs> all of them. I went wrong but in all of the ways. one was telling him. I, it was, it was. It went, and when that boy gets 18 drinks in him, yeah. like who's keeping? So he had a little buzz on. Those yeah. Irishmen, they're no, like, it's like, oh, I'm fine. That's true. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with this. He's like, I know. <laughs> that was the lure. <laughs> Ew. I need yeah. an adult. <laughs> um, no, I'm literally very bad. Have I told you about any dreams, Kim, that you can remember? Um, I have no memory either. No, I'm so bad at remembering dreams. I literally am so, so bad. But probably have had sex in my head with everybody on the circuit. <laughs> so let's can, go with that. Can I ask if, if Kim could make up a dream for you to have? This might hurt something. Um, no, no, no. Well, yeah. oh, Jesus. As you know, there are now four male leads on the show. And it's no coincidence that I have four limbs. the rest to your imagination. <laughs> I would have to be on my toes spread. That's true. <laughs> Who would get the toes though? <laughs> That's gonna it's leave a dream. A Everybody fits everywhere. I love it. I love it. Well done. I'm gonna try that out later. See what happens. It is Vegas. Hello my love. Hi, you babes of badassery. It takes one to know one. Um, you've had the enviable position of being in the backseat of baby. Have we ever? <laughs> well, would you please share oh, yeah. those moments with us? Well, the backseat squeaks, number one. <laughs> eat her, eat her, eat her. I'm sure there's some reason for that. Spring has got worn out. Go ahead. Um, I actually, I don't know if you remember this, but I do. I was in the front seat of Baby. Uh-huh. So I'm sitting with Jensen. It's fine. And um, he had to pull into his spot, but he also got to keep reversing. But there was a lot of, there's a lot of this. That's what she said. A lot of what? me alone, shut up, fuck off. Um, and uh, so I got in, and me being the 
good, responsible actor that I am, said, I, I got this seatbelt wouldn't, I couldn't make the seatbelt do the clicky thingy. And so without thinking, I went, how does this work? Here, you're me. This is Jensen. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're <laughs> no, 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 but see, here's the thing. I wasn't actually thinking, I was worried about my seatbelt. So we were both, we got it, and he figured it, and he put it, he went, and he got it, and then, and then I took a deep breath, because then I realized what had just happened. <laughs> and he goes, you know, I don't think that's ever been fastened before. <laughs> Doesn't get any sexier than that. Hmm? So I may have the honor of being the first person in the front seat who used their seatbelt. <laughs> Safety first, ladies and gentlemen. Safety first. How we do. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh... Hi. Um, I was wondering because Supernatural's ending and Wayward Sisters is maybe not getting made, you know, what are the other future projects? What have you done? What have you done? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Spoiler alert. Right right She's Louisa's. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's just like how we found out the series wasn't picked up. Yeah. I All mean, right. I did. Tell me more. Well, I was kind of hoping for, for Wayward Sisters, but you know. But, you know. What so other what, future projects would you be drawn to? What kind of stories do you want to tell next? Uh, I would, I would like to be paid for working. <laughs> I like, this is the thing, I mean, I know you're asking like a really beautiful, lovely question and I'm about to tear it apart, so. Um, <laughs> is that we are, I will speak for myself, I am not in a position where I get to be terribly choosy. So right now, especially with this series ending, I don't know, it's different for women in the industry, if you're above a certain age, if you're above a certain size, uh, there are a very limited amount of roles that you are right for. Now, I do feel like that landscape is changing, there is so much content now, and I am a very optimistic person, so I still go out. I think I've auditioned more this pilot season than I ever have in my entire life. and. Um, there's a lot of good, interesting stuff for women over the age of 40 right now, which I've never seen or heard. Yeah. Now, that being said, they're not hiring 40-year-old women to play those roles. But, you know, eventually maybe those age gaps will start to close. Um, but point being is, uh, I would love to play a character that is not a strong character, is not a vulnerable character. I would just like to play a woman that's going through life, who's trying to fucking figure it out, and has journeys and adventures and uh, bullshit to deal with on the way, because I can't stand this trend of pigeonholing women and female roles say, saying that you are one or the other, and that's it. Women are complex, they are complicated, and we need to be writing them as thus. That too is my final answer. Yes, great, wonderful. Ah. Hi. Hi. My favorite work of Kim's is the Chevy commercial that you did several years Ooh, ago for this. Movie. I saw that. I saw that. It's beautiful. That was like the first time we worked together. You had a video of it. I was like, holy it shit! We got an actor in the house. Amazing. My question is, how do you leave work at work? I'm and stretching my back. I promise I'm not doing anything weird. But yes, continue. How do you not bring it home to your family? And how, you know what I mean? That was a very emotional role. How do you leave that at work? Good night! <laughs> it's, it's, it's weirdly true. You have to have, you cannot survive as an actor if you ingest everything that you are embodying. Um, I, I, I certainly couldn't. Uh, I, do, I don't know, it's just, it's really, honestly, I'm sorry. Maybe this isn't why I'm, I don't know. But I'm just pretending really hard. 
And so it's like a child who puts on an outfit and slays dragons and dies and screams and then comes in and has a BB and J. It's really not much different for a 50 year old lady who goes in and now I will say the hardest thing I ever had to do was be on criminal minds. Like I can do the I can do the emotional stuff and leave that there, but having to go in and be a cold ass biatch to such lovely human beings every time they called cut, I was like, I'm so sorry. The script made me say it. I'm really sorry. So that I would take home and like, God, I hope they don't think I'm really this character. But that's my insecurities, and I get to live with that and kind of go, oh, sweet little Kim, look at you doing the thing. I've never really had a problem taking home the emotional stuff. There also was, like, there's the period of time, I don't know if you ever went through this, where you're prone to what we call showmances, especially in theater. Anybody know this term? Yeah. It's when you're doing a show and you have a romance and you think it's real, and as soon as the show is over, you're like, oh, what have I done? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. So, so there's, there is definitely, like, the body doesn't know you're just pretending. So if I'm playing a love scene with someone for a really long time, it starts to seem like this might be a good idea. But once you're older than 23, you generally can recognize that is just pretend as well, and you're pretending with somebody else. So, um, so no, I, I, it's been a long time since I, since I had to have an exorcism of a character. Thank you. And thank you for that, I loved that commercial too. That one was... That was, a, that was hard work. Uh, and when the sun hits you, that's when you let the tear fall. That was actually my direction. We were driving, the sun was rising, they wanted me to bring a tear in my right eye. And when we went past the mountain, so the sun hit my face, the tear needed to fall. Name one and I'm just imagine. Sorry, just, yeah. I was gonna say, just imagine what it's like for people doing sex scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little to the left. No, I wasn't gonna go there. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Hannah, and first of all, Kim, those are the greatest pants I've ever seen. Thank I you! We actually did a podcast inspired by these pants. Yep. Savannah Hoffman Boutique. She sent me, I sent up a Facebook uh, thing that said, I really need a job because I can't afford to buy clothes for this year's con circuit. And she said, I can't put you in a show, but here's a box of clothing. So you are going to see many Savannah and also, uh, yes, I, I have a couple of gifts that you'll see this year with grand finales and fanfare and other fan works. <laughs> so my question was, uh, if you guys could star in uh, either a show that has like finished uh, or is current or is like way in the past, you could choose your dream role from anything, uh, what would it be? Good Omens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to breathe air with those people. I don't care what I play. Do you know what? I, I don't know why I'm thinking this, probably because I just watched the British version of it, but I would love to be in The Office. I just am like, remember when The Office was new, that style of comedy, the multi-camera style, that mockumentary style? I would love to be in something like that, just to play those subtleties. I would love to do something very different from what I'm doing right now. Final answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. My name is Erin. I listen to your podcast a lot. I really enjoy it. Thank uh, you. Recently you had an appearance in L.A., uh, kind of like a live podcast. Yeah, again. yeah, I yeah. I didn't make it to that one, but Owls. is that something that we can look forward to seeing more often? We sure hope so. We're working on it. Yes. We are working hard on it. By we, I mean our new agent. Yay. Yes. And part two, um, Kim, listening to the stories that you tell about your life uh, growing up and everything, I just wanted to let you know I really identify with that. And even though I'm like I'm about ten years younger than you, I really feel it's it's nice to not be alone in the insecurities and the vulnerability and stuff that you display. So thank you very much. Thank you. That's the point of it all, right? What is doing this? We aren't alone. That's what Wayward really did for us. Is I was very used to this being a solitary experience in life, and um, and then you fuckers showed up. <laughs> 
ruined it. And we loved it. you, and we felt supported and loved, and then we felt like returning that support and love, and fuck off. <laughs> well said. Thank you. Thank you. I am nothing if not a tender, compassionate, and well-bred lady. <laughs> and we'll leave them with that. <laughs> Um, guys, we love you. Thank you so much. Kim Rose! I just had a whole bunch of pretzels, so I'm sorry I'm spitting pretzels. No, no touching, but spitting pretzels is okay. Um, so, um, so we're gonna, we're, we're, tonight you got your, you have your karaoke happening tonight. And, uh, and then tomorrow we're back at it again. Lots of great guests uh, yet to come. Um, and so have fun tonight, enjoy yourself, uh, hydrate, and we will see you uh, again uh, tomorrow morning. All right, thanks so much. Yeah.